Thank you all for being here. It's um, delightful to see all of you. I didn't realize we weren't going to have chairs, so, um, so come on in. Um, we are uh, delighted to have the opportunity today to introduce two new board members. Uh, needless to say, this has um, been a long time coming. Um, I guess this is the official end of the two-member board, huh, Member Schomburg? And um, we, um, I have to say before I introduce the new board members that um, we are all, I think, pretty proud of what our accomplishments were during the last 27 months during this rather difficult, challenging period. Um, I give uh, primary credit to my colleague Peter Schomburg and his chief counsel Terry Flynn for their willingness to engage uh, with me during this period to look for common ground. Um, we had, I think, a remarkable achievement. We issued nearly 600 cases. Uh, only about 10 percent of the cases we took up uh, were unresolved. So we are hopeful that the Supreme Court will agree with us that we did the right thing. Um, <laughs> We also want to give credit to all of our staffs who were extremely creative in helping us reach agreement and looking for ways to uh, narrow our differences. So we thank all of you uh, very much for, for putting up with us during this uh, last 27 months. And now looking forward, uh, Member Schomber and I are pleased to welcome uh, Craig Becker and Mark Pierce as our two newest colleagues. Um, as I said yesterday, they represent uh, 14 and 15 for me of the number of colleagues that I have served with my tenure uh, at the board. And um, I don't think that I really need to introduce them to you. I think by now you know their backgrounds, or at least what you've read about their backgrounds. Uh, and um, w what I would like to do is introduce each of them so they can talk to you briefly about themselves, uh, and then hopefully you'll all have a chance to meet with them and uh, have a conversation. So first let me turn uh, to Craig Becker, who's uh, number 14. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Wilma. Thank you, Peter. And thank you all for coming. Uh, so I've been a uh, board member for four days as of today, and uh, I feel like I have learned a few things other than how to find my office. Uh, one, uh, it's much more pleasant than the confirmation process. Uh, but uh, seriously, uh, you know, I think the confirmation process uh, was actually, uh, for me, healthy in a couple different ways, uh, and maybe more generally healthy in a couple different ways. Uh, one, uh, there were some genuine disagreements about federal labor law policy which were expressed uh, largely civilly uh, and resolved through the appropriate procedures. And uh, that's a process that we're all familiar with. Uh, that's a process which all of you promote in the workplace uh, and that I hope uh, the four of us and uh, colleagues to come will continue to promote on the board. That is civil disagreement and resolution through appropriate procedures. Uh, the second way in which it was healthy, I think, was that it was really a tribute to all of you. Uh, that is, uh, the controversy uh, really signals the importance of this agency uh, and what it does. Uh, the Senate clearly thought it was important, and the President clearly thought it was important, uh, and they're clearly right. Uh, so that's the first thing I learned. Uh, the second thing I learned, uh, and I think uh, Everybody who comes into this position and uh, takes the oath and sees that first case file on their desk uh, feels a certain tremor uh, of the heart. Uh, it's very different from what we've done before. Uh, I've been an advocate uh, and a scholar of labor law for some 28 years, uh, and I already see that that was fairly easy compared to this. Uh, when you're an advocate, you represent a single client, then you have a sole duty of loyalty to that client. When you're a scholar, you have the luxury of thinking about ideas and talking about ideas which have no immediate consequences. Uh, they may be important ideas, but they don't affect real people uh, in an immediate way. Uh, what all of you do uh, does affect people immediately in very important ways. The parties to cases, 
uh, employers and employees more generally. Uh, and you and we have a duty to both sides in all cases, to the Congress and to the American public more generally. So in facing this rather new and daunting responsibility, it's a great comfort to me that all of you are here uh, to be able to uh, talk to my colleagues on the board, to have my uh, naive notions challenged, to, to rest on your experience is really a great comfort. Uh, I was looking at some of the things the Supreme Court has had to say uh, about the board uh, and thinking about what I might say today, and I really uh, thought it was appropriate what the Supreme Court said in Fiber Board, where the uh, court spoke of the, quote, enlightenment the board has gained from experience, and I'm just hoping that you all will share some of that enlightenment with me during my time here. Uh, finally, you know, and, and I haven't met many of you, but I've walked around a bit and gotten lost and knocked on a few doors and been introduced to a few people, and it really struck me the incredible continuity which you all represent, uh, a, continuity, a continuity which is incredibly important uh, to the mission of the agency and to the enforcement of the statute. Uh, Wilma uh, mentioned that she's uh, worked with 14 and now 15 board members, but in meeting a lot of you, you have many of you have her uh, beaten by a long shot. Uh, so you know you represent just an, an incredible continuity in terms of the enforcement of the statute, uh, and it's a tribute, I think, to two things. One, all of your individual commitment to the purposes of the act and to public service. Uh, but also to this as a workplace, that you've all stuck it out uh, to, uh, to this degree. Uh, and I'm just uh, so eager to get down to work with all of you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Um, and uh, next I'd like to introduce Mark Pierce. Uh, who also, I believe, has his daughter here with him today, Naima. Uh, so we are pleased to have you. I'm sure you're very proud of your father and to be here today. Sh uh, I guess <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll tell us what you're doing in Washington. So Mark, who's number 15. Thank you all. I'm seeing a few friends here from way back. As many of you know, I started with the agency um, in, uh, in 79 and worked for the agency for 15 years and then decided that I wanted to go into the private sector, which is not necessarily the traditional route, but it was a, a very interesting experience and a good journey for me. I always considered myself the agency guy. I, I Started out with the field office in Buffalo, planned to uh, stay there for three years, and then 15 years later, I said, well, what happened? And what happened was the rich richness of the experience, the richness of working for this agency, a unique, an agency unique unto itself. Nothing is like it, and nothing will be like it, I don't think. Um, it's an opportunity now to come back home that I've cherished, and I feel honored to be able to be with all of you and to get the benefit of the kind of rich experience that you all bring to the table. Um, I was at meeting with the staff earlier today, and uh, we, we shared stories, and uh, I can see they have some real good war stories that I'm going to get all the info on, and uh, I had a few 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 good stories to tell them as well. And yes, yeah, some of you know I know stories about you too, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'll keep those for later. <laughs> but I'd like to, like to say that I'm very happy to be here, and I'm looking forward to these days to come, and thank you all. for uh, joining us and welcoming um, Mark Pearson, Craig Becker. Uh, we look forward to getting to work with them and please enjoy yourself. Thank you also to the R&W for setting up this uh, reception. So.
Enjoy.